All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over the intro to ECG or EKG. The electrocardiogram, also known as ECG for short, or EKG for in America, is a graphical representation of the heart's electrical activity. The reason it's EKG in America is because America likes to be different on everything. Just like Fahrenheit, just like Celsius, miles, kilometers, same difference. It's actually ECG because there's an E, there's a C, and there's a G. There's no K anywhere in its name. But of course, America. <laughs> Good old America. America. The ECG does not show anything related to the mechanical action of the heart. This scan is used in hospitals to check if you're having a heart attack or not. So if you go to the ER or urgent care and complain of chest pain, the first thing they're going to do is an ECG. They need to check if you're having a heart attack or see what's going on with your electrical heart activity. It's very important to note this does not show any mechanical action at all. If you want to see mechanical action, you have to do something called an echo or echocardiogram. That uses sound waves to see basically your heart contracting, the physical structure of your heart. So you ever see those medical dramas and they show the patient flatlining, flatlining. That's what an ECG is. That's an ECG. So normally an ECG, a quick ECG done in an urgent care or an ER is six seconds. That's it. It's really quick. What they do is they put electrodes on your chest and your arms and your legs. They press start and the electrodes are basically reading your electrical heart's activity. There is no, it's not painful at all. You don't feel a single thing. It looks scary because you're talking about electric and electrodes and whatever. You don't feel a single thing. And in six seconds, that's all you need. It prints this basically graph out. So let's go over it. This is a six second strip. So the ECG machine prints it a strip in six seconds. So it's, it's basically a six second strip. Notice we have 30 boxes. So what do you do is you see the first spike. We're gonna call these spikes for now. You see the first spike. That's when you start counting. So you start counting the boxes and you count 30 boxes. So one, two, three, four, all the way to 30. 30 boxes is six seconds. Halfway or 15 boxes would be three seconds. So if this is a six second strip, if you were to multiply it by 10, it would become a 60 second strip. Heart rate is measured in minutes or beats per minute or 60 seconds. So all you have to do is count up the number of spikes you see in 30 boxes or six seconds and that's your heart rate. So we see that you have one spike, two spike, three spike, four, five, six, and seven. You have seven spikes. That's for six seconds. If you wanna to get to 60 seconds or in one minute, we have to multiply it by 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, multiplied by 10 is 70. So this patient's heart is beating at 70 beats per minute, which is normal. Normal heart rate is from 60 to 100 beats per minute. So this is a quick overview of how the ECG works. You put electrodes. We're putting them on the right arm, the left arm, the left leg, and the right leg. And then we also have something called V1 to V6. And those are your, basically the electrodes around the heart. And then you would get something like this. That's what an ECG prints out. So your doctor will look at this, or if you're in a hospital and it's a continuous monitoring, you would see this, right? You have your heart rate, which is an ECG as well, blood pressure, O2 saturation, how much oxygen is in your blood, and resting heart rate, uh, resting resp uh, respiration rate, sorry. How you're breathing, how fast are you breathing? So, on this diagram here, what this ECG prints out is this. This is just one spike, one wave. We have something called the P wave. 
the QRS complex, and the T wave. And we're going to go over slowly what everything is. Okay, let's start with the P wave. This is the first thing you'll see on an ECG. Well, you should see it. This shows that the atria are depolarizing. It's very, very, very important to know that depolarization does not equal contraction. I've heard actually some professors say, oh yeah, the P wave is when the atria contract. No, that is 1000% wrong. This proves no contraction whatsoever. Yes, it may be happening, which is probably should be happening if you're alive, but this specific scan does not prove any contraction. All you're just seeing, is there electrical activity in the heart, yes or no? Because you gotta think about this. The SA node could be working completely fine. And the AV node and the Purkinje fibers, everything is completely fine. And the bundle branches are working as intended. But the actual heart muscle itself could die. It could not be alive. The cell itself, the muscle cell itself, could be dead, and if it's dead, no contractions happen. So the SA node could be generating all the electricity it wants to, and we would see that on an ECG any day. But it does not prove any mechanical activity because it doesn't prove that the muscle cells are dead. The way you would tell is if the patient's unconscious or dead, then you would know. <laughs> so let's start, P wave, yes. HVR depolarizing. Depolarization does not, does not equal contraction. So it just basically shows the atria going to the heart, go, the electricity going through the atria. Basically, it's proving that the, the SA node fired. So let's draw this on the heart. What, what is the P wave? What is the electrodes detecting? Okay. So this is the atria, and this is the SA node right here. So the SA node. That's the SA node. Ta-da! And the SA node fired. And it's spreading electricity around the atria, which make, would make it contract. And it also goes to the back membrane branches and makes the left atria contract. Okay, this is the P wave. The electricity is spreading through the atria. That's the P wave. So this is the first little bump you would see on an ECG. The next thing you have to talk about is the PR interval or the PQ interval, depending on what your professor teaches you. I call it PR interval. The PR interval is very important in ECG readings. This signifies the AV nodal pause. What is this? Well, let's draw it over here. So here's the AV node, right here. That's where it's located. So let me just... Uh... So what the AV node is going to do is going to, it's going to collect all the electrical signals. It's going to, and what it's going to do, it's going to hold it in place. The AV node, which is a pacemaker cell, but remember, if the SA node is working perf perfectly fine, the AV node does not fire anything. It's not generating its own electrical potential because it doesn't need to. The SA node is working just as fine. Remember, the AV node works as a pacemaker as a backup system. Only if the SA node stops working, then the AV node would fire. Its own, it would make its own electrical potential. If you have not watched the electrical potential, electrical pathway heart video I made, please watch that. I'll link it in the description. But I think it's very important you would, you'd see that first. Anyways, if the SA node is working perfectly fine, what the AV node does is it has another task. What it does is it holds all the electrical activity. So all the electricity basically gets packed into the AV node and it holds it there just for a brief moment, which is this right here, this flat line right here, that flat line. Why? What's the purpose? The reason is, is because when the atria contract, the ventricles are filling them with blood. So we're just assuming the atria contracted here, even though the ECG does not prove it. In a normal human being, the atria contracted. When the atria contract, the ventricles are filling up with blood. The ventricles do not fill up with blood instantly. It takes time. It takes a brief moment. 
So what the AV node is doing, it holds electrical activity just so we can have enough time for the ventricles to fill up with blood. If the ventricles were to contract prematurely, not enough blood would get to the body and you would probably faint. Or a bunch of other stuff would happen. Dizziness, lightheaded, non of oxygen, ischemic, ischemia, a lot of things. So the AV node holds electricity. Just for a brief moment, just so we can let the ventricles fill up with blood. Now we have the QRS complex. The QRS complex is divided into three sections, but we call it the QRS complex because it's basically all dealing with the ventricles. So first the Q wave, which is this section right here. The Q wave is indicating on an ECG that the middle of the heart and the bundle branches has received electricity. So let's draw the Q wave. What will we see? So this is what's happening here. So electricity has reached the bundle branches and it's the AV bundle rather. So this is, would be the AV bundle right here. And then it went down the left and right bundle branches. So it's going down the middle of the heart. The electricity is going down the middle of the heart or the septa. The septa is also known as the middle of the heart. So that's what the key wa Q wave is showing us. The electricity made it down to the middle of the heart. The R wave, which is right here, shows the bottom of the ventricles have received electricity. Like that. Ta-da, like that. The S wave in the QRS complex is showing the top of the ventricles receiving electrical activity. In addition, the electrical activity spreads this way now. So towards the middle, like that. Making sure everything has received electricity, all the ventricles, every part of the ventricles has received electrical activity now, electricity. So that's the S wave. In addition, during the QRS complex is when the atria are relaxing or repolarizing. We cannot physically see this on an ECG because the ventricles are so powerful. There's so much electricity in the ventricles. It just overpowers the atria relaxing. So we cannot actually see that on an ECG, but it's happening. Lastly is the T wave, which is this little section bump right here. This just shows the ventricles repolarize or relax. Because after a contraction or after depolarization, the ventricles need to relax when you have relaxation. So the ventricles are now resting. This is also known as the refractory period. So that is an ECG. Now let's talk about heart attacks, something fun. Well, it's not fun, but fun to talk about. How, does, how do nurses or ECG techs or doctors know if you're having a heart attack? How can they tell from this reading? Because it's just a bunch of lines. Right? It's just a little bump, bump, bunch of bumps and whatnot. Okay, let me draw it out for you. I'll show you what they see, what an ECG would spit out if you're having a heart attack. So let me redraw it a little bit here. La, 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 la. Okay. So, what a heart attack would look like is this. The, and then this would be the S wave, and then this would be the T wave. Okay. This is called ST elevation. This is the biggest indicator that you're having a heart attack, besides, you know, besides chest pain. You could have chest pain, but no heart attack but this is for sure telling you have a heart attack. So, notice that we have ele we're elevated, right? If this is baseline, and the S wave, you know, S wave which usually would come down here and then go like, you know, like, like that. But look how high we are. This is called ST elevation, and this is how you know you're having a heart attack on ECG. So, let's look at back here. Normally, in a normal, normal sinus rhythm, so no, normal sinus rhythm or NSR means that everything's fine, nothing's wrong. 
Notice we have go all the way down here and then we go back up and we're that's the T wave right there. So this is the Q, R, S, and T. We go all the way down, right? So we're at basically a baseline here. Well, ST elevation, we would go up here and then we would stop here and then we would go like that. So really high up. And that would indicate you're having a heart attack. There's a lot more to ECGs. I'm an ECG tech myself, so I know everything there is to know about ECGs. In this video, we're only doing the intro. Only what you need to know for physiology class. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, later.